Yeah. Keep recording. Let's keep recording. The first Ghetto Boys album. They they trying to tell me the Fat Joe. Oh my God. They said Fat Joe and Young Thugs. That record right there worked now. He right. sound like a nigga that's rapping for money. That's what he sound like. Ooh, Fat Joe he don't sound him. like he wants to be a rapper. He sound like he sound I like can rap. And I might can make he some money. He sounds like a nigga that can ride a beat, that can ride a track. That nigga terrible. Man. Yeah, he can ride a track. Stop it, man. You can ride a track. Man, stop it. Man. He, ain't no, he ain't top stop 100 favorite man. rappers, but goddamn. Stop like, it, man. come on, man. You stop you it, man. You can pay Fat Joe to Young Thug? Are you stop kidding me? Stop it, man. How disrespectful stop is this, man? man. <laughs> I say they in the same fucking game. How <laughs> you can you say that, bro? That's so disrespectful, yeah. son. Y'all, this is Spike Punch. <laughs> Street, hey, you know, we're gonna run down some history because I always like to start the interview based off when I first met Mike Street. You know what I'm saying? Uh, well, you tell me. It was University of Richmond. Okay. First of all, we got invited by Shaquan and Kalanji to come down there. That sounds about right. So when we got in there, you just look was like, who are these niggas? You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because it was like six of us. But I ain't kicked nobody out, though. No, nah, because you knew what we were there for. There you go. We were there to rap. So the whole time, though, when I got there, I thought it was Shaquan and Kalanji show. Uh. So they was like, yo, no, no, this street joint. This DJ Street. You know what I mean? Yeah, DJ, blah, 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 yeah, yeah. We can rap. Like, he let, he let us rap at the end of the show. Now, starting from that mm -hmm. to now, did you think that you was going to be in this position from University of Richmond? Hell no. Hell no. Not at all. I was clueless. I didn't have a plan. So you just it was winning any, it. It was any way to win, Blue. Wow. Really? No plan. No, no plan whatsoever. Did you think, though, that you would be responsible for the... The talent for the talent for the people that know Lonnie B, that know disorganized you, the super friends, the all the, the basic core of Richmond hip hop back then, did you think you would be responsible for that? Because you know you are. See, that's just it. I wasn't responsible for it. Like, because it was already there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, I can't be responsible for disorganized union because it was already disorganized union. Or if, even if y'all didn't have a name, y'all were already a crew. Yeah. I'm saying, as far as the being put out there, oh, giving, nah. giving us an outlet. No, nah, see, that, that's what we do. Like, it's like it was the equivalent of me getting new records. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So yeah. you get a new record, you play new records. That's dope. You know, I'm just playing instrumentals and y'all rapping. But that's like saying, if it wasn't for El Bravador and Fresh, whoever would have thought of mixing on the radio. That's why, <laughs> that's why every time I do an interview, I say, well, the reason I mixed on the radio was because of El Bravador. And DJ MC Fresh. But yeah, it, but it's, it, it, but honestly though, you are like a lot of people don't know. If I gotta say personally, you are you gave everybody that that hope, that that feeling that they can do anything they want to do musically. And being on the radio, you just don't understand. With us, Saturdays was the biggest <laughs> biggest day ever. Like we, Sean can vouch for this. We used to all write raps, and then we say our raps together to make, sure, to make sure that we won't mess up when we go to the radio station. No, that's how that's how that's how Shaquan did it. That's how Kalanji did it. That's how Mind Bender did it. That's I mean, you know, it was because it was fun. That's what we did for fun. Yeah. You know? Everybody else playing, you know, pick up and run, and we were just doing that. And as far as um. The records you played, you used to play Hill of Art. You was more into the underground hip hop. See, all right, we, we can talk about what that means later. Okay. <laughs> See, like, you know, this this is the deal. No, let's do it now. Okay. See, you looked at it as underground records, but it really wasn't back then. Because if you think about it, if it was available for sale and to play on the radio, then it really wasn't underground. True. 
underground with those guys whose records didn't get played. You know what I mean? And the same thing applies now. Like they say, all this music is commercial. You know what happened to real hip hop? It's like, actually it's a hundred times as many people doing records now. So you gotta just dig for it. How important mm -hmm. is radio today versus 15 years ago to an artist? Less important today. And why do you say You that? don't even need radio today if you're an artist. Why, do you, why don't you need radio? See, back in the day, radio was the only way that you could be heard. There are other ways to be heard now. Uh, there's other ways to market yourself. Like, you can market yourself without your song ever being heard now. True. You can put together a, a dope video loop and just show you move into songs and have a crowd in the background, you know? Don't even have to hear the music. And people are like, oh, I wonder what that song sounds like. Back in the day, it was TV, it was radio, it was print ad. You know, like if you're in your vehicle or if you're listening on any of your, you know, your devices, you know, we still let you know what's going on in the world, we let you know what's going on in your neighborhoods, and we play music that the masses enjoy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Back in the day, we did the same thing. But when it comes to the music and marketing of the music, it's not necessarily the same because now it's, it's research involved with what's played. I mean, you know, just having a conversation with a fellow artist and he was giving me the same information about radio and the importance of radio. Mm -hmm. And I was with you. Mm -hmm. But he was hitting some points though. Like, like what? Know, basically, I was just saying, like, you in the car, I got a hot record. Like he said, I got a hot record, right? I put it on the internet, put it on, the, on social media, you know. The right people hear it. Let me stop you right there. And this is which cameras? All of y'all. <laughs> if your record is really hot, the people that run radio will find it without you having to take it to them. Message! We can see who's selling records. We know what records DJs are playing in the clubs. We know which records people are shazamming in the area. So, if your record is really hot, we will find you. That's dope. I didn't know radio follows Shazam people like what, what's, follow us. What's, what's even funnier is all these people say, yo, you know, I got a buzz. Okay, everybody has a buzz. If you have social media, you have a buzz. If you have 500 followers, you have a buzz. If you have 100 friends and you only sold 10 records, your record's not hot. We was on social media. Social media. And... <laughs> Certain artists called out all certain, the radio. Certain local artists. They called out the radio DJ saying that radio is not doing enough to support local artists. Mm -hmm. Now, you. And I don't disagree with that. Okay. But you, here at your station, mm -hmm. have this program show called Flow. Flow. For locals only. Flow. And basically, the way Flow is set up is the, the artists submit music. Mm -hmm. Then you don't, don't you guys put it on the on the website and then people got to vote on them, right? Well, it, it's actually changed a lot because originally, like I knew we were gonna get a lot of response from it, but man, we had thousands. Like everybody, rap and music now is what basketball and football was back in the day. Every big dude wanted to play football. Every tall dude wanted to play basketball. Didn't want to go to school, but wanted to play in the NBA and the NFL. Yeah. So they see all of these other artists that that they think are on their level, saying, well, if he can do it, I can do it. He's selling records and making money and getting show money, I can do it. But the difference is, they're actually going through the business of it. Exactly. It, it, flow, flow originally, I, I kept the... You know, I, I didn't have a lot of boundaries. It's just, just send it, make sure it's clean. I understand everybody doesn't have a budget to get it professionally done. And, and then I realized I'm doing people a disservice because they want to be treated as professionals by having their music played on the radio with professionals. So I decided it has to be professional. It has to be mixed. It has to be mastered. If I call you and ask you, do you own the rights to your song and you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm not playing it. If I ask you, do you own the rights to your name 
and you don't know what I'm talking about. If you can't produce the paperwork, if you can't produce the trademark form or at least the number, why would I play your record for somebody else to steal it and you not to be not be able to do anything about it? Now, a record can a record be so hot in the city with no sales, but everybody in the clubs in, in Richmond they love the record when it comes on. Like DJ's playing his record, but as of right now, it's no sales. Absolutely, yeah. So would you would, would a radio be on top of that, and would that record be included in the playlist of the other major artists? I, I I tell you, this is the best way to put it. In order to play a record as a radio station that's local and has no research behind it, that's the equivalent of me saying that I'm willing to bet my current salary that this record is a hit. Because if I play it and the people that I work for say, why are you playing this record? Show us some show us some research or show us a reason why you're playing it instead of playing this Jay-Z record, or instead of playing this J. Cole record, this Beyonce record. I have to have something other than, I like it a lot. No, like I was hired to do a job. Yeah. My job is to get as many listeners to the radio station as possible. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's the equivalent that we were talking earlier. And, and everybody will be able to picture this. If you opened a shoe store, you have a, your building is the size of this room. You can only put 100 pairs of shoes in that shop at a time. Mm -hmm. You're going to put all of the brands you know. If Jimmy from around the corner comes up to you and says, hey, could you sell my shoes in your store? You say, well, I already have 100 pairs in here. Yeah. Which of these shoes do I take out to put yours in here? And Jimmy hasn't sold any shoes before? You got to go, Jimmy, you out of luck, man. Yeah, that's right. Go and get a buzz and get some demand for your shoes. And even put them in. And then bring it back. I'm not going to put you in the front window. But well, I'm going to put you. You might take these Puma spots over here or something yeah, like that. No, yeah. Not even the Pumas, man. <laughs> Maybe the Asics spot yeah, in the corner yeah, the of the Tonics. Oh, yeah. Uh, tonics. If, if that. Well, Street, I'm glad you got the chance to sit down with us and tell us exactly how it goes down. So now we don't have to be on social media. Well, I don't have to be on social media. You barely on social. Media. Yeah, you know what? I'm. I just. I just like peek in every now and then, and you know, cause I, I like. I just like the foolishness that goes on. But but I I, I appreciate you coming through. My brother. Well, us coming through. Bro. To you know, talk to you. I'm glad to have company, man. You know what I mean? You know, it's, it's good to know that we have some friends on a higher scale in this music business. We're on the we same can sit level, down man. and set cameras up and talk to them. Yeah, you know? man, we're on the same level. We came from the same spot. Yeah, and then you, you just entertained me personally when it came to music, but I still think that's right. You know, you know so <laughs> on that note, we out. Mike Street. Anything you, know, anything you wanna you wanna say, any advice you wanna give to any local artists? Yeah, yeah, real simple. Go ahead. If you like making music, make music. If you want to get into the business of making music, learn how to do business first and then make music. Well said. What do you mean to you the store? Spike Punch! What's up? This is Rock, one of the executive producers of Spike Punch. Do you remember that big crush you had in that one chick back in high school? You know, that girl you used to daydream about. You know, the one you hope wear those jeans that make her booty look so big. And then when you get brave enough to tell her how you want to get with her, she laugh and shoots you the fuck down. 20 years later, you happen to be in the grocery store and this very non-attractive dude looking lady walk up to you with some shitty kids and it's her. But she definitely don't look the same. Not what you remember. So you having a conversation and she said those dreadful words. I remember you used to be in love with me. Boy, you look so good now. Take down my number. What? Bitch. I told her, man, if you don't take your no neck smelling like old ass cooking grease, stingy, baby fat wearing Cheeto eating looking teeth ass out my motherfucking face. Ooh, you nasty looking bitch. So ladies, there's no need to try to get with the dudes you just wasn't feeling in high school. Just because them niggas you was chasing back then fucked you over, don't come looking for us. We don't want your ugly ass either. Cause, cause I keep it cool, even when I make it hot. I'm sure you're gonna act a fool when Little Rock takes your spot. Little, 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 little Rock takes your spot. Cause, cause, cause I keep it cool.
cool Even when I make it hot, I'm sure you're gonna act a fool One little rock takes your spot Little, 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 little rock takes your spot you, 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 I don't feel the need to brag about what we do on a daily basis Studio plus the business side, too much information I make music, the more time we spend telling y'all The less time I spend trying to do it